everyone, it's Tammy, and it's time to do card number seven of our Happy Halloween 12 Cards of Halloween series. And this is going to be an idea that I saw on YouTube, and I have not tried it before. And I can see I cut this vellum a little bit too wide, so let me make sure I cut this end correctly. Five and a quarter by four is what it should measure. Okay, so now that we have it, the right measurement. Um, yeah, so I was saying I saw this technique on, uh, I think it was Pinterest, and then I went and saw it on YouTube. And what we're going to do for this is we are going to take reinker, and this is vellum. And we're going to put a few drops of reinker on this vellum. And then we can take a straw and blow on the ink to make it a really cool design. And I just realized that I forgot to get my straw. So I will be right back with a straw. Okay, so now I have my straw. And we're going to do one piece at a time. And I really don't even know. I just took a lot of colors that I had in my stash and there's no rhyme or reason. So I'm just going to put a drop here. Kind of gives it a neat technique or a neat design. Make sure that you have something underneath it though because it will stain. That's kind of creepy looking. That one kind of looks like a creepy forest or something. I keep expecting not to be able to blow any more of the ink around and there's still more there. Okay, I think I'm gonna call that drop a day. <laughs> I will do another drop over here. That was a bigger drop. <laughs> Jambo's wondering what in the world his mama is doing. And I'll put one more of this color down here, I think. Sorry if my head is in the way.
So now I think I'm going to take some, I think this is purpley color. I don't know, maybe it's not. I hope it's not the same color. <laughs> Okay, it's not the same color. This actually smells really good. This is from Tim Holtz. And you know what, now that I'm doing this, I think that they did do it with alcohol ink and not the reinker because this alcohol ink actually seems to do a little bit better. See how the reinker still looks wet? I'm going to see if I can make that reinker not so wet if I, I mean, I think it'll be okay. I think maybe the alcohol ink should have, is the better of the two, but I don't have a ton of colors in the alcohol ink. So I think I can make it work. I think we'll be okay. Looks kind of cool, making sure I'm not making too much of a mess on my table. Um, let's see, I think I'll go with this latte re-inker, or no, alcohol ink again. Let's try this color. Yeah, it certainly doesn't take as long to dry and it certainly doesn't like go out as far. Um, let's see. I want kind of a purpley color, and this is purple for sure. This is Concord Crush, and this is Reinker, so I'm going to use really tiny dots if I can. That might be the secret. We'll see. I like the purple too. With the ink you have to blow a lot harder. That's kind of cool. I don't know. I kind of like it. I don't think I have an orange. I have a red. Oh, green might be good. Let me try this mint macaron. 
This again is reinker, so I'm not going to use a lot. Okay, I totally spit on that. And if you guys have been watching me this whole time, <laughs> kudos to you. And you can stop whenever you want. So I mean, whenever you think that it looks the way you want it to look, and I just want it to be kind of spooky and scary and Halloween-y. If you used like other colors, you could probably get some really other cool techniques. I'm just kind of using what I have and good, it like doesn't like come off with normal wear and tear. So there's one done and then I'm gonna do the second one and let's see, I'm going to try to use some of these alcohol inks. And see if just using alcohol inks gives it a better technique or no. The color payoff won't be here for this because I don't have a lot of colors. Actually, I think it looks like I only have a couple or maybe three. So I might have to go back to regular ink here in just a second. Pulling my brains out, it feels like. And then I have this one that's in a different kind of a container that I haven't ever opened before. So if you guys are still sticking with me, I really appreciate it. <laughs> I think this could be really cool if you have the right colors. I mean, I like it. I like the what we've done. I'm kind of excited to see what it's going to look like in its final project. And this is tea dye. I just ordered some of that. So I don't know if this is alcohol ink or not. This looks like it's, I don't know. You're supposed to be able to create a distressed look 
with this, which is the reason I got this. And then I also got some spray, but I haven't gotten the spray yet, but that might be cool. Looks like that's just regular ink because it's kind of doing the same thing that the ink does. Which is fine it's just blowing my brains out so I'm going to use some of this purple because I like it no I'm not this is red fantastic I totally lied some of this purple because I like it <laughs> oh. crafting in real life you can't make this stuff up can you All right, so now I think I'm going to dry that off. Oh, that's bizarro. Look how that looks. Where that tea was, that tea ink. That's very interesting. Huh, it's kind of cool. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of green, just since it's Halloween. If I had some orange, that'd be cool too, but I don't, so... I like it kind of going all over. Again, use, use, use scraps. Put something underneath your area. All right. Wow, I still got some ink on my... Oh, but it came up kind of nicely. Okay. Woo-wee. So that is done, my friends. That's kind of cool. Kind of a neat technique. You can see if you had some colors that coordinated together maybe some purples and greens and blues for mermaid scene or something like that it could be really really cool um but not that it's not cool now because I think that's kind of cool I like it so we are going to I didn't know how much of it would show through so I didn't put any other paper behind it yet and I don't know that I will I just wasn't sure exactly I wonder what would happen if I put like a piece of orange behind it let's just take a peek I kind of like it without anything. And then we're also going to 
Yeah, I kind of like that. That's kind of neat. Now, you can use regular ATG or um, snail adhesive for this. I think that would work out just fine, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and just put it straight down on my card front. And I'm going to make sure I get all of the edges. Since this is vellum, it will lift up. And I cut it just a hair shy of all the sides, so just like a regular card front. And then we're going to do a little bit of embossing on it too. Actually, I think those look pretty cool. Those are pretty neat. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my scrap. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get another piece of scrap, and I'm going to call this one done. Because I don't want to risk getting that ink anywhere. envelope down here that I've been collecting this kind of scrap in so I'm going to just put that in there too. Alrighty and then embossing. I brought out both white and black because I wasn't sure how I'd use it but I think I'm going to go for the black and I need my glitter board, which is just a piece of paper, just folded in half. And I need my embossing ink, which is just my Versamark. And I need my stamp. And I'm going to use the Happy Halloween. I have an older stamp set that I could use. Let me take a peek real quick. I do. I have this older stamp set. It's um, called Trick or Treat by Stampin' Up. I'm going to use this one because I'd like to put Trick or Treat on there. So to do this, you just stamp into your embossing pad and get it all inked up, but you won't be able to see it yet. And then find where you'd like to put it. Ooh, and I hope I didn't move it, at least not too much. And then you you just put it down wherever you think you want it. And this is going to be black, so. Okay. So now what we do with this is we take the embossing powder and you just put it on the area that you Versa marked 
and magically it shows up. I'm going to do it again just to be sure I got it all. And then I'm going to flick the card to get off all the extra. And it looks like some extra is sticking to the ink, so I'm just going to have to be careful and pull that off with my finger. And I will show you another technique here in just a second. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. I was kind of worried about that because it sticks to like gluey areas and that alcohol or that ink is acting as though it's a glue so it's keeping some of it. Ooh, this one did a really bad job. Look at that. Oh, that's horrible. Okay, so I need a oh, a brush. I wear a paintbrush, where would I be? Here's one. It's taking it off the area I don't want it taken off too, so I need to be careful. know why I'm worried about it so much because I'm just gonna have to put some more back on here It's coming off decently where I don't want it. I'm just having to be really careful. And it's not perfect for sure. Okay, so that one might just be done for the second or for the minute. And this one came out a lot nicer, but I can still clean it up a little bit if you can see where it needs to be cleaned up. Okay, that one's actually pretty good. This one, on the other hand, is not so hot. And it's very weak in the amount that it has on the areas that, that it did stick to. So I think I'm gonna do it one more time. And I think I'm going to take my brush and kind of push it down. And then I will take it. It's still horrible. So I'm hoping that you guys can tell what I'm doing. I'm just taking my brush and brushing into the areas that I don't want the embossing powder to be because you want to be able to read what it says
I just noticed one of my candles burned out. That's interesting. I mean, it still has a ton of candle left. I don't know why it would burn out. It's one that I was kind of disappointed in. I think it's from Goose Creek, and people love Goose Creek, but I am just not liking this candle. I mean, I don't not like it exactly, but it, it's not anything. It's nothing to be excited about. And I was, and people were saying how great it was. Okay, I think I'm just going to have to go with that. And then you can save all your embossing powder, which is very nice. Because you really don't use very much at all. And then what I like to do is take it and kind of do your fingers on it. Now the black embossing powder and black glitter is like the worst. At least it seems like it to me. Maybe it's because you can see it the most. But I'm never able to get it all like you think you should. Like see how there's still a bunch left. I will usually take this outside and just kind of clean it. So that's what I will do when we're done here. I just kind of tap it and just let it go outside in the grass. <laughs> okay, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and clean my stamp too because if I don't, I'll forget that I haven't cleaned it yet and I'll put that back and that glue on there is really not a good thing to keep on. So let me find my spritz. Where'd you go, spritz? There we go, so that's all cleaned up. And now we're going to take the heat embosser, or the heat gun. Get my selfie stick out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to turn this on and let it run for a minute or, well, not even a minute, but 30 seconds or so before I start embossing this. And then you just hold it over and keep moving it around and it will melt this embossing powder and you'll be able to see it become shiny. So that one's done. And this one's going to be a little bit of a hot mess. But there we go. It's actually kind of cool in a way. I kind of like how it's kind of creepy looking. Okay, so then I'm going to take my brush and make sure that that's pretty clean because I use this brush for other things, including watercolors. So I even have ink for my um, calligraphy. I wonder how that would look on there. This is beautiful ink. It's from Hobby Lobby. It's Dr. P.H. Martin's Iridescent. I probably shouldn't try now, but I'm dying to know, so I'm going to do one little bit. One little bit.
it's kind of cool it's iridescent I think it does as well as everything else huh kind of interesting almost makes me want to do some more but I'm not going to but I could do it all day because I have some other pretty calligraphy colors I have a blue and I have a black which isn't that pretty but look at the ink I have on my hands that's okay that is okay so I think we're gonna call this done I was thinking about maybe putting a bow on it or something but I don't even know if it needs it I mean it's so busy like it is I mean it might just be cool I don't know what do you guys think Hmm. I'll make it go all the way up. Have enough for a little bow, so I'm tying a bow. But I want it to be over more. So this was a very long technique card that turned out pretty cute. I mean, it's my first time trying it and I think that some, now that I can practice with some different colors, knowing the difference between the inks will help a lot and hopefully that will help you guys too. So the alcohol inks are the ones that spread the least and gave very good pigment and were fast drying. The regular inks are decent. Um, not my first choice for this kind of a card, but not horrible either. Um, the calligraphy ink works as well. I would, I would do that again. Um, so I guess all in all, if you have the different colored alcohol inks, those work the best, like refillable, refillable alcohol inks. Um, most of mine were Tim Holtz. Actually, all of mine were probably Tim Holtz. I do have a couple Copics now that I'm thinking about it that I probably could have used but on the other hand um they probably weren't the right colors i had like a light i think i only have like a light i only have a couple so i have a like the blender i have that which wouldn't give us any color but it might do some cool blending effect i don't know and then i have like a light blue and a light pink um so yeah i don't know that that would have helped us but I bet that the Copic refills would be fine too. Just any sort of alcohol ink refill would be best. But if you don't have those, I would not say run out and buy them for, you know, one card or whatever, of course. Wouldn't say to do that for anything. But um, you can use regular inks. Just know that you're going to have to mess with it a little bit more. And you're going to have to blow your brains out to... <laughs> I mean, I'm literally, I'm going... <laughs> like blowing your brains out, not not literally, but figuratively, um, to get it to move around. I mean, it moves around a lot, but it moves around so much that you need small drops. So this one I used smaller drops than this one. I don't know, I think they both turned out cute. I don't mind either one of them. Um, neither one are probably the, my favorite card that I've ever made, but I like them. 
and they're kind of spooky and Halloween-y, so hopefully you guys do too. So, that all being said, just like always, if you guys want to win one of these cards, it could be yours, all you need to do is leave me a comment answering the question that's in the description box, and then also asking me a question that I can ask for tomorrow's card. Now, you also need to be a subscriber. So, um, those three things are the requirements, and if you win, I will contact you, and I will get your card out in the mail, and it will just be the card with one of my business cards in an envelope ready for you to give away if you want, or you can keep it, whatever you want to do. And... This is card number seven. I accidentally wrote card number seven on yesterday's card, so I kept the envelope, and here it is. This will be the card for you. Oh, let me take a picture. I'll take a picture of it first. That way we'll know, but this is going to go in the envelope, ready for you, and that's it. So just be a subscriber, leave me an answer to yesterday's question, and leave me a question that I can ask tomorrow, and you could win this card. Thanks so much. Can't wait to see what questions you ask. Bye-bye.